wanted to start off the evening by wishing each and every one of our Talmidim, the graduates, a mazel tov. A mazel tov, of course, to the parents. You should all continue to see much nachas from this son, from all of your children. They should grow up to be wonderful Tamidi chachomim. They should be a pride for the whole mishpacha and a pride for Klal Yisrael. Just wanted to start off with the short Tvar Torah. We know in this week's parsha, Kairach comes to Meish Rabbeinu, and he gives him many different arguments. Amongst the arguments that he gives him is, Rav Lechem, Kikol Eidu, Kulam Kedoshim, and he claims, Madua Tisnasu Akal Hashem. And Rashi explains that what does he mean, Madua Tisnasu Akal Hashem, why is it that you made your brother Aaron for the Kayin? Why is it you couldn't have chosen me for a Kayin? For Sepis, Aaron should be the Kayin. And I, I don't know if the way to understand it is, is that he was jealous. Maybe he wasn't just jealous, but he just felt bad. He felt bad. He knows the position of a Kayin is a very prominent position. So why wasn't he chosen for that position? So I just wanted to explain a little bit of a mahalach. Aaron was chosen for that position of being the Kayin. And let's just discuss for a moment what's so unique about this position of a Kayin. I don't think that we have in Kalal Yisrael such a situation where a father is kind of for himself a midah, and that midah goes over from generation to generation. If a person going back a thousand generations, his grandfather was Aaron Akayin, he is a Kayin, and therefore he has a Hashivas that another person in Klaaso doesn't have. He's Hashiv, he gets the first Aliyah, and even if he doesn't have other Milas, but the fact that he is from Bnei Aaron Akayim gives him a tremendous Hashivas. Also, he is the one that's chosen to give over a bracha to Klal Yisrael. When we get up to Duchin, and we give over the, when the Kayin gets over, to give over the bracha to Klal Yisrael. It's his bracha, it's a bracha min from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's the one that's chosen to give over this bracha. And of course, he is the one that when it comes to bringing a carbon, so he's the one, he's the representative that has to bring, that he's the only one that's able to bring the carbon. Why was Aaron chosen for this job? The Mepharshim, they say, because Meish Rabbeinu, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Meish Rabbeinu that he should be the one to lead Klal Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, Meish Rabbeinu in the beginning turned it down. He doesn't want to do it. And Chazal tell us that the reason that he didn't want to do it was because he was afraid. Aaron is going to feel bad. Aaron would feel bad, and when we think about it, he had good reason to feel bad. For the last 80 years, Aaron Akoyin was the one who represented Klal Yisrael. He was the leader in Klal Yisrael. He was the one who gave him direction. He was the one that when they had Nebuchadnezzar, all of the years in Mitzrayim, they came to him. His younger brother, Moshe, said he left Mitzrayim. He was someplace else. He even wasn't involved with the Eden all of these 80 years. And now, now Moshe Abenu is going to come back, and all of a sudden he's going to take over the position of leadership in Klal Yisrael. So Moshe Abenu told HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's, it's, he, he has to feel bad. How, how could he not feel bad? HaKadosh Baruch Hu told over to Moshe Abenu, don't worry. Not only won't he feel bad, but he'll be happy. Why will he be happy? And it's interesting. He'll agree. Of course he'll agree, if that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants. But not to have feelings? Feel bad? Why not me? He's happy to do it. 
Why was he happy? So in the Svarim it says, because Aaron Akayin was not interested in himself. That's not where his interest was. He wanted to do what's best for Klal Yisrael. He wanted to do what's best for Kveit Shemayim. That's what he was all about. And if the one that could do the job better than him is Meisha Rabbeinu, so be it. And if, you, and if Meisha Rabbeinu is the best person for the job, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu chooses him to do it, so then he has the biggest simcha in the world. Because Klal Yisrael is going to have the best person possible in order to lead them out of Mitzrayim and to take care of their needs. That's why from Aaron's children, Aaron was kind of this Mida, and his children therefore carry this Mida. That's why his children are the, are the ones that give over the bracha to every single person in Klal Yisrael. They're the ones that are the shluchim to bring the karbonis to see to it that a yid should have a kapara, to take care of the needs of everybody. He is the one, Aaron is the one that has this tremendous feeling for every single person. I mention this vart because when we look at this graduating class, I just wanted to mention to the parents, you should all have much, much nachas. This is a class with not only do we have bachrim that sat and learned Bahasmada. Not only do we have Bachrim with wonderful Midas Taivas, but this Mida of Irach of Isamach Belibai, that they looked out for each other and they cared for each other, which was something which is very, very prominent in this class with every single one of the Bachrim. They cared and they looked out and they did what they can in order to help another bacher that he should succeed and he should be matzliach in his Torah, in his avayda, that he should be a good student and he should be able to succeed in all of the years that he was here in the yeshiva. This midah of a roach of a somach belibay, caring about somebody else, caring about kveit shemayim, this is a wonderful meter that we found with every one of the graduates in this class. I wanted to mention it to the fathers and to the mothers that you should continue again to have much, much nachas from your children and you should only see wonderful, wonderful things coming from each and every one of your children. I'd like to ask uh, the Bacha Yitzhak Toledano who was chosen as the representative of the Talmidim to speak for the island. Bershus, <clears throat> the Rosh Hashiva Shlita, Rebbeim Shlita, dearest parents and my dearest Chaverim, Fifteen years ago, my father went with my older brother Baruch to get a fahar in the yeshiva of Riverdale. And as my father walked into the Rosh Hashiva's office, he noticed that the Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Ram Azbaun Shlita, was speaking to a bachar who was getting married that night. So the Rosh Hashiva asked the chassan, how are you feeling? So apparently he answered him, I'm excited. At that moment, the Rosh Hashiva got out of his chair and exclaimed, excited? You're excited. You're going to build a new generation of Klal Yisrael with an enormous amount of achrayas. And you're excited? So at first glance, my father was puzzled. What's wrong for the chassan to be excited on the day of his wedding? But after a second of silence, he understood that this was not only a marriage lesson, it was a life lesson. It was the ultimate definition of what and how Ben Taira should manage his feelings through every single experience of his life. So tonight, as Baigri HaYeshiva, we might experience some level of satisfaction, or accomplishment, or maybe even some joy, as they call it a graduation. But this evening, I believe we should all direct our feelings and attention to treasure the power of this holy moment. 
and to reflect on the immense responsibilities that fell on our shoulders tonight. So as I prepared my remarks for tonight, I asked myself, what qualifies me to deliver a lesson in such a moment? Or what is the most important message I can possibly convey to our Rebbeim parents and friends? Should it be a message of joy, an experience of completion, or maybe we're just celebrating a diploma? So I would like to share with you, Gemara, I'm sure you already all know by heart, that we will pave the road for my message. The Gemara Masechah Shabbos that speaks about Maimed Har Sinai says the following words. In other words, it seemed that we have received the Torah by force. If you accept the Torah, then life is great. And if not, I'm going to drop this massive mountain on your heads and you're all going to die. So this Gemara requires a deeper understanding. Because first and foremost, we know the famous question that Taisus asks, asks that if Am Yisrael already accepted the Torah by saying Nasev and Ishma, so then what was the necessity to force it upon them? And the second question is that, really why? Why should Torah be delivered with a threat of such a harsh punishment? Wouldn't it be nicer if HaKadosh Baruch Hu would come to Kal Yisrael and convince them of how great Torah is, so that way they can love it? And finally, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to give them the Torah with a condition of accept or die, so then why was it done by taking the whole mountain and entertaining the possibility of dropping it on their heads? Wouldn't it be enough to tell them if you accept the Torah good, and if not, you're going to die? Why do they need to die by the mountain? So after searching for an explanation, I found the most amazing pshat from Rav Shleim Evol who explains this Gemara in the simplest yet most eye-opening way. When a Kaddish Baruch Hu came to Kalal Yisrael, he wanted to, to, to deliver a clear definition of what Tyra is all about. Tyra is not just a source of spiritual joy and satisfaction of understanding a complicated sugya. Tyra is not just a tool to have Simcha Sechayim. Mayra Vera Baisai, Tyra is the blueprint, the foundation Tyra is the basic condition of the existence of the world. Simply said, the world only has two options, Tyra or no world. If you accept the Tyra, excellent, and if not, you're not going to be punished. The world will simply lose its basic right of existence. Sham Tiei is not a punishment. It is simply the direct result of the terms that the world was built on. I know, said HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that you said Nasev and Ishma. It is so sweet of you that out of your own free will, you decided to accept the Torah. But that is precisely the problem. Because when you accept Torah because you truly feel like it or because you love it, then what will happen when you just don't love it anymore? The fundamental experience, uh, existence of Torah is not up to your feelings or moods or attitude or any emotions you're going to have at any given moment. Tyra is the world's oxygen and the source from where the world is breathing from. And lastly, pulling my hands off the mountain describes what will happen to the world if Chas V'Shalom HaKadosh Baruch Hu lets go. When Hashem pulls His power off the mountain, the result will be no world. And this is the experience I have learned with my dearest friends for the past four years. By having the schus of breathing this powerful oxygen of Tyra by learning in the amazing Yeshiva Gedele of Los Angeles. Every single day, every single moment, watching our Rebbeim and Rosh Hashiva, listening to their life lessons and installing into our, heart, into our hearts the joy of learning Tyra, alongside with the deep understanding of the responsibility of carrying this world's oxygen, and that they made us balishos to breathe Kaisle Beis HaMedesh for the past four years. They raise us to breathe this powerful Yusayid that Tyra means life and nothing else matters. And these are my true Akarsa Thai feelings I have. I'm lifting my eyes with infinite gratitude to the Bari Ailam, Al Shesam Techekenu Miyesha Beis and especially this Yeshiva. There is endless amount of gratitude we owe to our greatest Urbayim for their Messiah Snefesh in creating our lives. And words won't do justice to the Akarsa Thai for you all. 
And on behalf of my entire friends, I would like to express an immeasurable akarsataiv to you, our parents, who brought us to Ayla Mazar and Ayla Habra with much Mesir Snefesh in order to raise us as B'nai Taira with so much dedication and love. And of course, on my deep personal note, I would like to express powerful love and akarsataiv for you, my dearest Haverim. Every single one of you is nothing but a flawless diamond and a treasure for me and for the rest of my life. You are truly rare gems that contribute so much to me and my life, and I'm forever in debt to all of you. And yes, I will be honest for a second and share with you my true feelings of Akar Sataiv and share with you my greatest humble bracha, that may we all be zaycha to identify the gifts that HaKadosh Baruch Hu planted in us, and that we become fruits that our parents and Rebbein planted in us by being Talmidi Chachamim and Ayvdi Hashem. And on a deeper personal note, I would like to express my ultimate esteem, admiration, and honor to my parents, whom I adore and love more than words can ever be able to express. And now, I have the greatest honor and pleasure to introduce a very special Rebbe, who I'm sure we all owe a tremendous Akar Sataiv, and I'm happy to explain why. The Gemara Masechah Sanhedrin Davchof Aleph learns the Pasuk that we're all familiar with. Sheker achein vehevel ayayfi isha yiras Hashem hitis halal. Sheker achein means it is indeed chein, but it is sheker. Hevel ayayfi means it is indeed yayfi, but it is hevel. But the real value that counts is the yiras Hashem, and that is what deserves the ultimate praise of hitis halal. So the Gemara goes on to explain this Pasuk and says, Sheker achein zeidare shalmoyshe. Hevel ayafi zeidare shal Yeshua. And isha yiras Hashem zeidare shal Rabbi Yudah bar Eloi. Shal Yeshim v'loim de entire miskasim mitalas achas. Sheker achein is a generation of Moshe. Sheker. Hevel ayafi is a generation of Yeshua. Hevel. So the Marami Prague explains the most amazing shot. That yes, it is true that in the generation of Maisha, there was learning Taira. But they were Eichle Aman, meaning to say that they had everything that was going on for them in the most miraculous way. So learning Taira then is great, but it's not good enough. And yes, in that generation of Yeshua, when Am Yisrael were sitting, with peace and love, relaxation and security, then learning Taira then is good but it's not good enough. But in the generation of Yeshua, of Rabbi De Bailai, where all the Talmidim were poor to the extent of Shisha Talmidim Betalus Achas, with this kind of Messiah Snefesh, the Gemara says, he tishalo. So with this Gemara in mind, I want to say it as clear as possible. Raising Laim De Tyre in the holy place of Yerushalayim, or creating Yeshivas of Nebrak, is of course wonderful and honorable. But creating Laim De Tahir and Tamid Chachamim in the city of Los Angeles, California, that is a true miracle. That is true Hitis Halal. So it is my greatest pleasure and honor to introduce to you the person I personally, in behalf of all of us, believe that deserves this Hitis Halal. For his powerful leadership, unique Tyra teaching, angelic Midas, and a rare personality. My Rebbe, and our Rebbe, and the light in front of our journey, Rav Aaron Svi Thank you. Thank you. Every year I get up to speak by graduation, but this year something feels different. This year has been, to say the least, very challenging. Not just for me as a Rebbe, for me as a parent, for you as parents, for all of us. The year started, we started above Metzia Shnaim Erksen with a knack, sugya after sugya after sugya. Above Metzia is like a dream for a Bacher to go through, through the heaviest sugyas you'll find in Hashem, the Zik in Kemat. 
and we came to that vav, and we came to the sugi of Tokfikoyin, and everything came to a stop. I wasn't feeling well. I was in bed for 10 days. The yeshiva closed down, and I was very scared, very nervous. This is a golden year for these boys. It's 12th grade. It's Shnayim Eichsen. It's Tok Fekayin. How could everything stop? I want to tell you something. The amount of Hatzlocha these Bachram have had over the year is a nace. It's a nace min ha-shamayim, the siyata de shamayim that Rebbe Yishalom gave them. And the koiches that he gave us as Rebbeim, Hanhala members in running a yeshiva. L'may l'may derech ha Every single one of them was not Messiah Das from the sugis that we were learning. I remember when I was getting a little bit better, they were going to hear a from someone else. My son comes home and says, Ta, they want you to come back already. They want you back. I'm thinking to myself, the Mardika Shi'ifa that the Bachram had to make it through the Kufa of Corona, to make it through the shutting down of the yeshiva, whether it was on the phone, it was, they were ready to do it. And they put their kaiches in. And they were super, super matzliach. What was the secret to their success and to their drive? I want to share with them a vart. Could be I share with them through the year. It's Kedai to Chazer it over. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Avram Avinu in Parshas Lech Lecha, V'ayoytze oysa achutza v'ayoy merhabet no ha-shamayma. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram Avinu, go outside and look up in the sky. Usvor ha-kechavim. And count the stars. Im tucha lispar oysam, if you're able to count them. Avram went out and he tried to count the stars and he couldn't count them. There were too many. Vayoyimer loy and he said to him, Ko yiyazarecha. Your children, Klal Yisrael, will be endless and endless and endless. Oyev de Hashem. You won't be able to count them just like the stars of the sky. Shtaltzach the Rishayinim and the Achreinim akash on this Pasuk. Why did Avram Avinu have to go outside? Avram Avinu knew that the stars were endless. And if he would try to count them, he wouldn't be able to count them. Let HaKadosh Baruch Hu tell Avram Avinu, your children are countless, endless, like the stars of the sky. Why do you have to go outside and count them? Try counting them. Says Rameir Shapiro, a powerful vart. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was testing Avram Avinu. He gave him a tzivoy that Avram Avinu in his mind knew it's impossible. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was testing him to see if he would try to do it even though to him it seemed impossible. Go outside and count the stars. That's an impossibility. Did he do it? Yeah. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him to do it. How was he going to succeed? He didn't know. Takash Baruch Hu told him to do it. He went outside and he tried to count the stars. That was the Ratzin of Abba Akash Baruch Hu. Avram Avinu came back inside and he told Akash Baruch Hu, I tried, but I can't do it. It's impossible. Akash Baruch Hu told Avram Avinu, Koi Yia Zarecha. Your children, they're going to want to do the Ratzin of Abba and when they're not sure if it's going to work or not, they're not going to stop. They're going to try, and they're going to try, and they're going to try until they succeed. That's a meter that they will pick up from you. You just showed me that you're someone that, when that's the Ratzin Abeyri, you do it, whether you could or not. You don't measure by your Yechayles. You measure your decisions by your Ratzin. Rameh Shapiro says a powerful vart. B'nai Avram measure their yechilis by their rotsen, not their rotsen by their yechilis. A guy, not a bnei Avram, he measures his rotsen by his yechilis. If he's able to do it, he wants to do it. It's easy. If it's hard, 
then he doesn't want to do it. It's too hard. Bnei Avram Yitzchak V'Yakov. We measure our yuchayles by our ratzay. First, we look to see if we want to do. If we want to do it, we make it work, and we figure out how to make it work. These bachim showed me throughout this whole kufa. They knew it was a big year. It's twelfth grade. It's time to learn Shnayim Ertzin, learn Tuk Fekayin, and be kind of the Limon, and be kind of the Yonim and learning. And they knew we need to do it. We must do it. There's nothing that's going to stop us. They're married to Shi'ifa and Ratzin to accomplish and to do well brought about what seemed to be at the time an impossibility. But there's another Nakuda, I think, also that had a good chalik of the success of these bachim, And my father alluded to it before. The Ksav Sefer asked the same kash as the Meir Shapiro, the same kash. Why did Avram Avinu have to go outside and see if he could count the stars? He knew he couldn't count them. Why did Akash Baruch tell him to go outside? Says the Ksav Sefer of Meir de Kivart. He says Avram Avinu went outside and he started counting. And he looked at the stars and he realized there's one star in the sky that supplies coldness to the Bria. There's another star in the sky that, su that supplies warmth to the Bria. There's another star in the sky that supplies wind to the Bria. Dryness, wetness, cold, hot. No star is the same. So Avraham Avinu came back into Rebbe Hashem and he said, Rebbe Hashem, they're only one. There aren't many stars. They each have a separate function, and together they're one unit. So I can't count them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram Avinu, Koi Yia Zarecha. That's how your children will be. They'll understand very well that they're a unit called Klal Yisrael. And every purpose, every person in Klal Yisrael has a tachlis. And they'll be mockered, they'll respect the fact that he has that mila, I have this mila, I can help him in this, and he can help me in something else. We're not many bachim in one shir. We're all needed and we're all necessary together in the shir. I'll never forget this. It was the middle of the hard kufa during Corona. Bachim were at home on the phone. Some bachim were getting together on Zoom. Everybody was trying to figure out an Eitzah. A bachim calls him up and says, Rebbe, I'm fine. I'm doing great. Don't worry. But one of my friends is not doing so great. Can Rebbe call and be mechazakim? This is true here that they had for each other. They had a whole year for each other. But when it came time and things were rough because it wasn't so geschmack and at home, that's where they really stood up and they said, we're going to take care of each other. We're going to make sure we're all matzliach. Now we're back in yeshiva. Some bachim are learning inside, some bachim outside. Rebbe, whatever my chavrusa wants. If he wants to learn inside, outside, whatever is better for my chavrusa. This is the general attitude that this class has. The Muradika Achtus, but not just the Achtus, the fact that they're makir, that each one is so valuable, and each one has so much to add to the Chabura, I think was very instrumental in the success that they had over the year. With these two Mailas, with the Maila of Ramey Shapiro's Vart, never measure whether you want to do something. It's not totally in your Yechelis, it's totally in your Ratzin. You measure your chalice with your ratzen and the other mida to be makir, the value of every single person in Kla Yisrael. They should continue to grow and to steig in this yeshiva and in future yeshivas and to be like the stars that they are. The Gemara says that there's shleisha shutfin ba'adam. There's a father, a mother, and the rebani shalaylam. I feel that as being a Rebbe in yeshiva, an in-town yeshiva, when I have a schus of meeting up and talking to the parents on a constant, constant basis, the shleisha shutfin ba'adam, shleisha shutfin ba'bacher, the rebbein shalaylam, the father and mother and the Rebbe. Maybe it's four. The Rebbe is the fourth. 
the geschmack that I have, and all the Rebbeim have, to have a personal yachas with the parents, on a constant basis, to share in the nachas. And during the tkufa of Corona, the father called me up when things were rough, and he said to me, my son is losing his voice. He's screaming a whole day and learning in the house. He's losing his voice. I said, that's what it is, a ben taira that's into learning. And I think the parents this year, with all the difficulties, had a geschmack and had the nachas to see their sons at home sitting and learning for hours on end. Usually they're in yeshiva. You don't see it right in front of you. You hear about it. But when you see it in front of you, your son sitting and learning for hours on end, first seder, second seder, night seder, after my rebbein asdarim, it's a constant hasmada that the bachrim pick up. And the nachas that the parents had is the same nachas that we have a whole year. And as always, we have one of the parents to represent us, to represent all the rest of the parents. I myself am a parent this year, so he's representing me also to come up and deliver the very bracha to the Talmidim and the parents of the yeshiva. Rabbi Shua Milman, the Rosh Kailo for the Valley Kailo. Just the Rosh Hashiva, around C. I always wanted to know what it felt like to be brought in as an out-of-town speaker this year a little bit, you know, coming from the valley to come speak to everyone. Bemis, the, the words that were said, we're just going to blend them together, e echoing the same message of, of Yitzchak and of Baran Tzvi and the Rosh Hashiva. As much as we want to feel and, and think and believe in Merz Hashem that we're, we're done with Corona, obviously on some level, it's still, it's still here. As much as we saw the, the social unrest, Baruch Hashem finally settling down, but I think it, it shook us all up on some level to realize that maybe America is not exactly what we thought it was. We're not exactly living in the world that we thought we were. The one thing, though, I think that we all realized, the frat in this tkufa and being parents in this yeshiva, is that we saw the constant limud ha-toyre ba'amelos of these most amazing yeshiva bachrim and the yeshiva and the entire yeshiva. And I think when thinking about it, our, our chiyav as parents is Pasha Takara Satoiv to the yeshiva. I just want to bring out, I think, three points where I think we have to focus on our Karas Satoiv, and hopefully I'll be the proper shliach to be Makir Toiv for all the parents here sitting here tonight. When we think about a yeshiva and what exactly a yeshiva is, so the Pasuk says that Yaakov sent Yehuda to Mitzrayim to set a Besa Talmud, to create a yeshiva, a Besa Talmud, a place for learning, for intense learning. And uh, the Sifsei Chaim, Reb Chaim Freelander, brings from the Rambam, Memer Nevuchim, Taich from the yeshiva, what's a yeshiva? He says, a yeshiva is a place to be yeshiv bekviyas, to literally sit bekviyas, to... to to have a place where we're established and we're not moving, a place to be kavua. And it's well known that Reb Leib, it's printed B'Shem Reb Leib, and it says the briskarov was Meshabeach, this letter that Reb Leib wrote, the Shtigotari that Reb Leib wrote, what Reb Leib was Meirich, on exactly what a yeshiva is after so many yeshivas were destroyed in Europe. And he writes, he says, HaYeshivas HaKadoshes, Behem HaYakol HaRechosh HaKal Yisrael Begolos. The entire wealth and everything that Klal Yisrael, so to speak, is worth in Golis, ligs in Yeshiva, is in Yeshiva. Behem hishtamra toira v'yira bechol taharasa kasher milifnim. In Yeshiva is where it's protected toira v'yira in all its purity, like it was for many generations. Like we know the Gemara says, Yeshivas were around from the Ovis HaKadoshim. Behem hishtamer ha'amola shel toira. In yeshiva is a place where the amelos batayra, the toiling in Taira, is kept. The ha'ion bepnimiyas ha'tayra, and being ma'ayin in the depths of the Taira. Bahem ha'yunikeres malchusay shel hakadosh baruch In yeshivas is a place where we could be makir the malchus Hashem, the sovereignty and the kingship of the rabbi neshalaylam. Bahem ha'isa ha'tayra shalta v'gvira ve'ein oid melvada. In yeshivas, Torah reigns supreme, and there's nothing but Torah. 
When you walk into yeshiva, if it's established properly, you walk in and you realize that there's nothing else but Torah. The walls are filled with Torah. All the greatest wealth and everything is found in yeshiva. Bahem sharsa shechina. In yeshiva is where shechina is found. Rabbi Yerucham used to say that we have to be makbid and shtelling of yeshiva the same way the yeshivas were established by Yemei Ravina and Rav Ashi to be shomer, to make sure, like Rabbi Leib Malin writes, that we have kol tahara and all that a yeshiva has in it. I've been zaycha to know the Rosh Yeshiva Baruch Hashem for, for, for many years. I never learned in yeshiva, but definitely got to know the Rosh Yeshiva. And when you think about it, like was mentioned before, to establish a yeshiva like Yeshiva Gedoyla here in the middle of Los Angeles, it's nothing more than somewhat of a miracle. And the only way that can be done was because the Rosh Yeshiva learned by his Rosh Yeshiva, who learned by their Rosh Yeshiva, all the way going back. Like Rabbi Yerucham says, to back me, may Ravina Ravashi, making sure that the Yeshiva HaKadosha was kept in its perfect surah. For that reason, I think all of us have to be makir toiv, that we were zeicha here, living in Los Angeles, to yeshiva that was established, mamish, kitsura, like it was in the generations and generations back, all the way to be Yemei, Rav Ina, and Rav Ashi. I think with that, we all realize that our yeshiva bachrem were zeicha to two unbelievable midais or, or character traits that they were instilled with in this yeshiva based on the fact that this yeshiva with Shtaldavek was established in the proper form of the yeshivas as they were throughout all the years. In Beit Adon Lamakoim, we know that a person that's Omo Vatayra has a whole different surah, has a whole different form of being a ser- servant to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and being an Oivet Hashem. The Pasuk says in Parshas B'chuk Kaisai that in Tiyu Amelim Vatayra and Rashi brings over there that you have to be mis'amu batayra al-menas lasais. You have to be omu batayra al-menas to do, al-menas to do tayra. Rabbi Yerucham and Das Tayra writes over there that there's a special siyata deshmaya when a person is omu batayra, when a person toils in tayra, that he'll be zeicha, to be able to be an oisei ha-mitzvah. A person will be able to be a, a, a oivet Hashem. So for that, we have to be makir tayi for this yeshiva, the Amelus Baterans Yeshiva, which allow each and every one of our children, and on some level, it affecting us as well, to be Oivde Hashem Kitsurasa, through their Amelus Bateri, their Zeicha to the Siyata Deshmaya, of being Oivde Hashem, of being Oisei Devar Hashem. In Bein Adam La Mokoim, in Bein Adam La excuse me, we all know how Taira refines a person, like the, the, the Mishnah the Abba says that the person that learns Taira Karoi is to keser taira, to a crown of taira. Ramatisio writes in his sefer on Kinyane taira, what that means is that a person that is this misamel ba taira karoi, that puts forth effort in taira and steigs in taira, he's a refined person. He's princely. He's almost like a king. He wears a crown. And for that, we also have to be makir taiv. The power that was given to our children to steig in benadam lamakaim, and of course in benadam lechaveri on their Steps to hopefully reaching the ultimate Kesar Taira were all founded here in the Yeshiva. And when we think about it, aside from the fact that, of course, the Kaychas that the Yeshiva is planted in this Yeshiva, in keeping with the Tzura of a Yeshiva, in keeping with the perfect Tzura of the Yeshiva from all the Dairas, there's our Chaim HaKadosh that I heard a few weeks ago as I was driving in the car, I was listening to a shir from Rabbi Shai Yakon. Shai Yakon is one of the people that's Isaac in, in many Bachram who are not as matzliach as they are here in yeshiva, and he deals with bachrim that are having a harder time. And he quoted a murdek arachayim akadosh in Parshas Kisavai. The arachayim writes over there, and the pasuk says at the end of Parshas Bikurim, "V'samachta b'chol hatoiv, asher nasan l'cha Hashem aleikecha levaisecha." Simply read, talking about all the good that we rezeicha for, all the material good that we rezeicha. You should be sameach. You should be happy with the lot that you have. It says the arachayim akadosh that we could learn this pasuk. That it's going on Yirmuz b'Maybur b'Chol Hatoiv El Hatayra. When it says the Samachta b'Chol Hatoiv, the pasuk over here is referring to Tayra. Ka'im Ram Zal v'Ein Toiv El Like we find the lashon of Toiv in reference to Tayra. 
And he says, Shim hayu b'nei adam margishin b'mesikos v'areivas toiv ha-toira. If pers- person would internalize and realize the sweetness and how, how, how uh, the, the arevas of Torah, hayu mishtagim u'mislatim achareha v'lo yachshav b'heineyam malei oilam kesev v'zav v'zav l'mu'uma ki ha-toira k'ilelas kol ha-toiva sheba oilam. The Rechaim writes, if a person internalizes the arevas, the sweetness, the depth of Torah, a person would internalize that and he would be mishtageya. He would literally, his whole mind, his whole life, every thought, he would be going after Torah and realize that really nothing in this world, kol kesef and kol hazav, doesn't come close to the value of Torah. I think that there's only one way really in this generation that our yeshiva bacharim are able on, on, on the level of which they are to succeed and to mamish ligging and learning like was brought out before, especially in this coronavirus where it was brought out to such an unbelievable madrega. Because we have Rabbeim, Rashi Yeshiva, and I know my, my good friend Abar and Tzvi from learning together for so many years, that they're margish the Mesikos and Arevas Batayra, not only for themselves, but they have the unbelievable way of passing it over to our Bachram as well. So I think Rabbi Yisai, Befrat speaking to you, Bachram, you have to think of what you got here in this yeshiva. You got an unbelievable chinuch to be mis'amal in Torah. You got a kinyan, how to learn a Ramban, how to learn a Rambam, how to shtel on a Rashi, how to shtel on a Taisis. Those tools are the most important tools for anything you do in life. Like we said, in Adam Lamakim, it'll allow you to be a Ayyad Hashem. It'll allow you to be a good person, Bain Adam Lachaveirai. And it will allow you to have the proper focus on what's important in life. And it even will allow you to be, to have the brachas of kol, ilam hazeh also, like the Pasuk says in Parshat Kisavai, v'nasati gishmecham v'itam. In Amelus Batayra is koilol everything that's good in this world. And really, if we internalize what we got here in this yeshiva, bein the Bachram and the parents as well have to say, just a yeshakayach for everything. And we appreciate it. Yeshakayach. Just to introduce the last speaker in the program, besides the Bachram being Amal Batayra all the years, they were also Amal in their secular studies. And this is an opportunity, a graduation of four years of hard work. I'd like to call upon Rabbi Manny to give out the diplomas. Some of you, I can't really tell who you are, so I'm going to take your word for it. When I call your name, I'm assuming it's you. Before Menachem Chaim. Arniel. Aviel. Yaman. Nach Mendel. Schleim. Leo Schleim. Ayelab Leo Lev Yehuda Bensian Yankov Moshe Shaya. Mayor. Avram Moshe.
Moshe. Shlema Ram. And last but not least, Yitzhak Yisrael. Thank you very much for coming. There are packages on the table for you to take home. Thank you.